Here we are. Thanks for letting me hit your ride over. No problem. You sure we can't drive you back? Nah. Feel like stretching my legs. It isn't far. And anyway, can't put the wind in a bottle. <laughs> All right. Tessa should be at her parents' grave, not far from the entrance. Look for a big, crooked tree. You can't miss it. I'm gonna go check in with my uncle. Good luck. For real. And welcome you back. Pretty spooked. I've never been a big fan of cemeteries, especially after, you know. I promise after this, we can chill at the house, cool? Yeah? Okay. Welcome, uh, my name is Rosera, and you mm. are tuned in again to mm. Tell Me Why, Chapter 2, and this is probably Part 3 of the game, of this, uh, of this chapter. Um... So yeah, let's dive back into it. We're over at the Lakeview Cemetery, and uh, it's time to see if we can get some information more about where, because uh, the mother is here, and the and Tess is currently here. So I never wanted to come back here. Yeah, that makes two of us. Yeah, who ever wants to go to a cemetery? Really, the most fun place to be at. Looks beautiful, though. The pearl of a runlet that never ceases. With a hollow, boiling voice, it speaks. And has spoken since hills were turfless peaks. Wait, what? What was that about? Nice view, though. this I have no clue where to go but I'll just go this way hey graves are back that way oh sorry didn't mean to uh, interrupt or anything so did you ever come back Shh, keep it down better much why do people always feel like they have to whisper in cemeteries I don't know Probably just a mirror neuron thing. A what? Monkey <laughs> see, monkey do. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, have you been back here at all since the funeral? No. I've never had a reason to. Thankfully. There's something near. My mother made us come here all the time. It was so weird. Why do we always come here? Does it bother you? No. It's just weird because we don't know any of these people. I, I mean, except Eddie's mom. It never hurts to say hello. Because they're very lonely. That's right, sweetie. And sometimes, even if you can't see them, they stay with you. In here. Always here. Mom? <laughs> always. Okay. She loved us. A lot, but sometimes it was like loving us hurt her. Do you think she was just really scared of losing us? Maybe. That's what I yeah. guess. But I don't know. I mean, most parents are scared of losing their kids. No, yeah, well, she was a mental wreck to start from, so... Isn't that really... Already saying much? What's that? Due to the natural outlawing of native religions and ways of life, much of our knowledge of the old ways of the Tlingit spiritual practice has been lost. Below are two everlasting examples of the love and reverence we continue to show our departed in the tradition of our ancestor. Mm -hmm. Mourning those who've journeyed to the other side. As love transcends all boundaries, 
The passing of a clan member is an event felt throughout the community. The people come together to mourn a loved one and lift their opposite clan member's spirit. When the eagle is being mourned, the raven shows love and strength open upon mourning eagle clans. Likewise, when a raven is being mourned, the eagles are there for their ravens. Um, after the service, it is a ceremony customary for members of the opposite mo moiti to comfort the grieving family by bringing out their at oil land owned regolia to symbol symbolically catch tears before they hit the ground and comfort the grieving clan members with support. Oh, that's nice. <coughs> Oh, whoa, 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 wait. I didn't want to go back. There was something else there. Celebrating life. The 40-day party is observed 40 days after the passing to pay respects to the departed. Some believe this is a more recent tradition. Family members organized and organize a shared, shared meal where, the, where, where a fire dish... One plate of food is burned to nourish and on and and comfort the spirit of the departed. Damn, reading is difficult today. One year or, or more for the passing, a kuex potlach, I, I don't know what that is, is held to the first mourn, the mourn, then celebrate the life of the departed. It is hosted by the clan of the deceased. This is to honor the departed clan clan member through a traditional ceremony. Show appreciation and pay debts to the opposite mo Moiti who supported the clan during the time of mourning. I really hope I pronounced those things right. Probably totally butchered that. What's this? I need to speak. Well, here's the crooked tree, but no Tessa. Let's check around for her parents' grave, just to make sure this is the right spot. You think it's possible Michael remembered it wrong? Well, I've done inventory with him before, so yes. Okay, look at tree. Wait, is this the one we called Big Crookedy? The exact one. Why didn't we call it Gnarl's Branching? Total missed opportunity. <laughs> because we weren't hip to basketball back then? Or CeeLo Green? Damn, I remember it going all the way up to the clouds. Everything does when you're four feet tall. True. Guess again. Something like Philip. Taylor Phillips. Okay, don't know that one. Next one. Here lies Robin uh, Becker. This one. Okay. There's some new flowers over there, so that's probably the one we need. Here lies Adriel Yessi. Okay. This is... Anything? Nah, just a whole lot of nothing. This might take Julie a while. Julie Simmons. Oh, there's new flowers over here, so... Big chance this is it. No luck on... De Leon. There we that's are. That's the one! Don't tell me we missed her. Oh well. Who cares? Wait, Eagle? Wow. Hello, Mr. Eagle. Such a beautiful bird. Kids. It's time. Mm -mm. Where's that eagle then? Oh, there it is. Where are you? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Do you really have to go, Eddie? Hold my hand if you want. I can walk fine on my own. It'll be quick, okay? Then we'll get something to eat. The day of the funeral. I barely remember it. That's probably for the best. I don't yeah. think either of us are exactly eager to relive what went on behind that gate. So... I know I said we didn't have to visit her grave. That it feels like the right thing to do. Yeah. Exactly. Hazel Salazar. That's a weird name. This. Lost in the chaos of history. What's that mean? Not sure. 
but Michael should know. To honor those no longer with us, the Tlingit Preservation Committee and the community of Delos dedicate the mo this monument as an everlasting connection between past, present, and future generations. May the memory of our dearly mm. departed never be mm -hmm. lost in the chaos of history. May this be a resting place for our loved ones, for our loved ones <coughs> who journeyed to the other shore. May the eternal love soothe the wounds of days past towards the brighter horizon. That's nice. Well, when did Michael's uncle die? Last year. It was really hard on him. He's still feeling it. Long time no see. Do you want some company? Come on over. Make yourselves comfortable. Wait, what? Oh. So, how are you, um, holding? Is this a bad time? With you? Never. Don't mind me. I'm not really here. Hey, I get to see your ugly mug almost every day. You're old news, lady. <laughs> you wound me. Deeply. <laughs> so, can I help you guys out somehow? What's your uncle like about this place? Talk to you later. What's your uncle like? So, what was your uncle like? Oh, boy. Where do I start? Y you know that one grumpy grandpa in all the sitcoms? The one that types like a T-Rex and never leaves his recliner? <laughs> I think I'm getting the picture. <laughs> Not yet you aren't. As grumpy as he was, they didn't make him any sweeter than him. He's the kind of guy who accepted you for where you were at, even when he didn't approve. Not many of those out there. That's true. You and your uncle were really close, huh? Definitely. I could push his buttons without even trying. My family's old school clinket. <clears throat> Spent more time with my uncle than my dad. He was the first person to test out all my new recipes. Even before Allison. Guess I should thank Uncle William for saving me from a muffin top. <sighs> Can't wait to get home and try that famous marinade. So... What's the secret ingredient? Wouldn't you like to know, huh? Bird syrup. Uh, how could you? Twins before hose, Michael. <laughs> what? Hey, can I ask you something about this place? Yeah, shoot. No. What about the Clinket Memorial? What's the story behind the Clinket Memorial? May the memory of our dearly departed never be lost. In the chaos of history. That was Uncle William. <laughs> Lost in the chaos of history? Well, let's say you wanted room for a school or a road and didn't give a shit about ethics. Easy. You just dug up our ancestors. That shit happened a lot. God. True. Assholes. Yeah. And I mean, it still happens, but not as much. We have the elders to thank for that. Oh, that's true. I'll stop bugging you now. Well, I'm here if you're ever curious. Well, I'm not curious. Talk to you later. You bet. Later. <clears throat> Goodbye. So, um, how are you, um, holding up? Well, it should be. Everything's such a mess. I thought we'd almost be done packing by now. So ready to put this place behind us. At least Mr. Hollywood Handsome over there. Do you remember where she is? No. And for what it's worth, I remember staring at the water during the funeral. Hmm. So, well. <sighs> well. Uh, Allison, please. I'm, I'm not going. Allison, come back. Okay. Yeah. Any hope that this would be easier than last time? Totally gone. At least this time, no one's sending me away. I'm holding you to that. Afterwards, That's true. You and I had a moment over there by the totem, right? I wonder if we could see that. Doesn't hurt to check. Yeah, that's where I went when I ran off. Oh, can I remember this? Yeah, there we go. 
I won't let them take you away. I'm gonna tell them the truth. You swore, Allison. I'm gonna be okay. Please, don't worry about me. Okay. Interesting. I know I'm supposed to get over this brown thing, but... I really wish you'd been able to come visit that much. Yeah, me too, but... Look, I didn't make any promises that day. You did. Watch. Okay, interesting. They all think you killed her. It's not fair. I'll be okay. You have to take care of yourself now. See? It's possible. But I don't think so. Well, I know so. Thinking about it got me through the rest of the day. I'll be back soon, all right? Promise. But I'm gonna come see you every week, and we'll talk with our voice every day. Mm, uh, Ellison's version. I'll be back soon, all right? Promise. I'll be back soon, all right? Promise. I'll be back this sounds soon, more likely. Right? He was way too witted for. Chief Brown's gonna take care of you. To not we'll know okay. what would happen. You'll see. Kids. I'm sorry it took me so long to come back. I got so caught up in everything that. You really don't have to explain. I understand what you were going through now. Are you ever gonna let me finish my sentences? <laughs> nope. Maybe someday. But not today. Oh, well, that was interesting. Because I, I think that um, Allison would probably be more... Uh, because she was more emotional, she wouldn't make any promises or something. And, and try uh, and have the thing with visiting every day. While Tyler was the one who was so quick to say, like, I'll, I, I'll take the blame. So he'll probably know what was already realize what would be coming it's interesting you think snowball still lives in there snowy owls only tend to live about 10 years oh rest in peace snowball this spot's familiar hmm? wait <clears throat> that means that they were close <laughs> Hard Marion took it when Eddie's mom died. Well, we were only four, but yeah. She lost one of her only friends. She was always saying how she never would have found a place in Delos Crossing without Carol. Hmm. You think her death kicked off Marianne's, you know? It definitely didn't help, but no. It was years later. Oh, wow. Finn Andres Anderson. Didn't live more than two years. Three. Damn. That's tough. Hey, there's Tess. I guess Marianne is over there. And then I took Jane to ice skating on Wednesday. I wish you could have seen her. She took off across that ice like she was born to do it. She is your child, that's... Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. We didn't mean to eavesdrop. No harm done. Hey, you're that nice gal from the Vecchi store. Allison, right? Yes. And you're... Um... It starts with a K, right? Kendra. Don't worry. Don't expect you to keep track of everyone who passes through. And you would be... Her brother. I'm Tyler. Pleased to meet you, Tyler. Mm. Oh. Where's your accent from? <clears throat> I hope this isn't rude, but where's that accent from? Georgia. Born and raised. Landed in Delos about two years ago. From Georgia to the middle of nowhere, Alaska. <laughs> There's gotta be a story there. Well, I wasn't planning to stay for more than a few months. We came up for the fishing season, just like we'd done twice before. My okay. husband, Meech, he always tried to convince me to stay on longer, but I wasn't having it. But then... Well, we lost him. Fishing accident. Oh, God. I'm so sorry. Way too many families around here have lost someone that way. Yeah, something's mm. gotta change. 
Anyway, <clears throat> now it's just me and my daughter, Jaina, and I just can't bring myself to pack us up and leave him here all alone. Damn. Do you want to go back to Georgia? Well, that's the real question, ain't it? I never used to like it here. Too cold, too quiet, like yeah. a frozen desert. Thousands of miles from family. Yeah, but that these days, be my I finally started well. to see it the way Meech did. All of the beauty. Are you okay? Yeah, I. I just wish it hadn't taken losing him to get me to come around. Mm. I'm realizing now I fought him more out of stubbornness than anything else. That's. That's gotta be hard. Yeah. Probably. Don't ever let your own sense of what is come between you and the people you love. It's a real easy way to squander precious time. 100%. Do you think you might stay then? Well, my mama's been making the case that Jaina deserves to grow up with family. And she's probably right. But if I'm honest, the solitude here is a bit of a relief. I don't have to worry what a hundred other people are up to. Just, you know, me and my girl. No matter which way I look at it, there just ain't a clear choice. Mm -hmm. What do you think Jaina wants? I think she's happy to be wherever her toys are. <laughs> but when I think of how close I was to my cousins True. growing up, well, she may not realize she's missing out, but she will be. You know, I probably put too much stock in chance encounters, but you have any thoughts? Well, this town is de is a dead end. You should stay. I can't make the call. Maybe travel. You should stay. It sounds like you've got a good thing going here. Why not give it a little more time to see? I do, don't I? I can always change my mind, but yeah. for now, it feels like the right thing to do. It sounds like you've only got good options. I don't yeah. think you need to worry about making a wrong choice. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Well, uh, we should get moving. I hope everything works out for you and your daughter. See you around, Kendra. Yeah. You do have a good day. Yeah, I don't really want to live in a city or a big claustrophobic mess of houses together. Damn. Not saying it's... She got kind of stranded out here. I know. And her daughter's barely two years old. God, those kind of accidents happen all the time. But the penalties cost less than safety upgrades, so... So they do jack shit. Yep. Life's got a price. Definitely. Living in a city is not for me. I would rather have something nice and... Well, calm uh, aside the beach somewhere, secluded, or in a small town like I'm doing now. Uh, I'm, I'm living in a really small town at the moment, so... And it's so nice to just this, walk out, nothing to worry about. Right. Enough space. Yeah. God, I, I think I need a second. I'm gonna have a look around, okay? I'll be right back. Yeah, all good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no dice. Memory of Sophie Walter. Not hers. How can you see that? There's you can't even read what's on there. Why can't I remember? Why can't I read this? Where is she? There he is, Marianne. Marianne Ronan. Mm -hmm. July 8th, 1964. Hmm. Allison. Is that her? What the hell was going on with you? What? Broke? Didn't you say anything? We were your goblins. <laughs> you didn't have to do it all alone. <laughs> Tessa? Kids, I, uh, 
I, I wasn't expecting to see. Oh. What are you? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Feeling a little guilty, maybe? Well, it's out of the bag now. Oh, geez. These two are looking kind of pissed. When we pass on, our graves are all anyone has to remember us by. Physically, yes. Letting hers just fall apart would be cruel. I'm not a cruel person. Cruel enough to call social services on our mother. I... I, I wanted to protect you. Marianne was getting worse all the time. I was afraid that if things kept going the way they were, then one day... We were going to end up dead? Look, I'm sorry I didn't tell you the whole story back in the store, but I didn't want you to to- Enough with the excuses. What yeah. the hell happened to her? Why'd you turn your back on us? Your mom was always just barely getting by, and over the years she burned a lot of goodwill. It got so bad, no one was willing to hire her, and the stress of that, well, it, it took its toll. I tried to help, but she pushed me away. She pushed us all away. In the end, she isolated herself from everyone. She was alone and out of options. She had us! Until you threatened to have us taken away! I couldn't let her drag you down with her! Mm. She had you stealing for God's sake! Your mother never wanted to be a part of this community. She always thought she was better than the rest of us. A spoiled little girl playing fairy princess in the woods. If she just settled down with someone instead of running around with married men, well... Just ask Sam Kansky how much better that would have been for everyone. Wait, what? I... Oh, God. What happened between them? I, I wasn't thinking. Please, just forget I said anything. God. Seriously? Tessa. Again with it? All I know is whatever went on, Laura left Sam over it. But I shouldn't have said anything about that. I promised I wouldn't. What? I'm sorry, kids. So there was more the, to the whole story than just... Well, I can't understand why she would do that. <coughs> I mean, there's so much going on that if a mother secludes herself, completely isolates herself, has two children, has them stealing for her. Yeah, I think if I were a shop owner and know and see that going on, I would probably call social sh social services as well to just say, well, But yeah, should I make this decision from their standpoint, or should I make this decision from mine? Because I am going for you did what you had to do. But their standpoint would probably be you could have done better. Or you destroyed the family. Both more the hating options. I'm, I think I'm going to go with what I, what I think is best. I've been doing that, so... You were worried. And you did what you thought you had to. I get it? We both do. The situation was so fucked that, well, there probably wasn't a good answer. Probably not. Thank you. Leaving I... things like it was would probably be screwed I... up. This was screwed no. up. I could have done more. Marianne was fragile. She needed help, and I... Yes. I failed her. It's my fault. She's gone. Well... I know I've made mistakes. All I can do now is say that I'm sorry. If I could give you back your mother, I would. I don't deserve your forgiveness, especially yours, Tyler. But if there's a place for me in your lives, I'd like to be there. I have to know something first. Are you good with who I am? I've been thinking about that since you came home. I believe that my life is better for having lived it by God's word. But I also believe we don't always understand what he's saying to us. Wow. 
I prayed for guidance. And seeing you standing here in front of me, such a strong and thoughtful young man, I think I have his answer. Hmm. That means a lot to me. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. Tessa, I know the last couple of days have been hated. I'm up for a fresh start if you are, but it's not really up to me. Tyler? I'm done losing people, yeah, of course. After what has happened, why, why search for more I'm done losing conflict? people. And if we can't let people grow, then what the hell kind of chance do we have? Exactly. Thank you. Both of you. Kids, I never knew your mother's whole story. But it was obviously very painful. She always said you two were the only good luck she'd ever had. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try harder to forgive her. I hope you can as well. If you two are in town tomorrow, come by the cafe. Lunch is on me. There gonna be coconut cake on the menu? You know, I think there just might be. <laughs> I'll see you two tomorrow then. We'll be there. Come on. Well, that's a good sign. A good finisher for this. It's really nice that someone who's in religion uh, is so open to something like this. That was something, huh? Yeah, it was. I had pretty much given up on her. But I guess sometimes people change. I know. I feel like a total ass right now. She did need it to hear all that, but she probably feels the same. I bet Tess is thinking the same thing. Yep. Things are going to be real awkward my first day back in the office. Oh, I'm sure you'll both manage to never talk about today. Exactly. Awkward yeah. as hell. Damn. This is such a beautiful place. I'm just going to leave this here for a few. Let my uh, editor n uh, use this at the end. <laughs> Just move this slowly like that. Let's pan everything into view. And move it back. Oh, not that fast. No. Okay, that fast. <laughs> Damn, this, this game looks beautiful. I know that I'm spoiled with, uh, with The Last of Us, but the whole style of this game, it's so awesome. So good looking. There are some things that look a bit wonky, but I can understand why. Because there are some some things like that grass over there. It, it looks a bit weird. And I know that's just being silly about certain stuff, nitpicky. But if you look at the the, the clothes, like you want to sit down for a bit. The fabric on the on this jacket, it's just holy crap. Well, I can sit down for a bit, if you want. Oh, nice view. Not a bad view, right? Yeah. I get now why they put cemeteries in nice spots. Takes a little bit of the sting off. Our reunion hasn't really gone as planned, hasn't well, it? Well, this reunion's kind of gone off the rails, huh? Oh, you mean how we kind of turned Delos Crossing upside down and shook out all its nasty secrets? <laughs> yeah, but... At least now we know what really happened. I can't thank you enough, by the way. Well, there's still hey, one mystery with Sam brothers Kansky. Brothers and sisters, right. But it's been way more brothers than sisters lately. Which is why I'm trying to say thank you. You really don't have to. You saved my life, Allison. Only for you to end up locked up in fireweed for the rest of your childhood. Wait, yeah. are you still blaming yourself for that? Don't. It was my choice. It's just... I stole your life, Tyler. I think And not. then I totally wasted it. That's not true. You're on your way to Denali. Michael's gonna be a famous chef. And, and what am I doing? Nothing. Stop putting yourself down. Nothing. You've been working on that accounting degree. And your art's good. Really good. Stop putting yourself down. Yeah. As soon as we figure this shit out, we're gonna sell the house. And you're gonna go to Juno. You're gonna kick ass. You make it sound so easy. No. We never had a shot at easy. But we always pull through, right? Yeah. You're right. Hey. 
Wherever Ranger Tyler ends up next, he better come down from the hills to visit us city folk every now and then. Eh, you hear? For sure. And anyway, it's not gonna be for a while. We've got time. Oh yeah, of course. We do. So I guess we know the story now, huh? Not everything. Marianne was done with Delos, and Delos was done with her. Maybe she was too proud, but she worked so hard for so long. And when she reached the end of her rope, no one was there to help her. Not even Tessa or Eddie. And when she heard social services was coming, she, she gave up, but killed her kids? Really? I don't know. still feels like there's something missing, right? Yep, there's something missing. Let's see if we can You're find out. You're never gonna understand what was going through her mind. I'll bet even she didn't. Probably. It's probably always gonna feel that way. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna fall asleep the second I hit the couch. You better rally. We still have to do some cleaning before bed. Uh, do we have to? Hey, whoever packs the most gets the big couch tonight. Allison. What I'll the? get the fire extinguisher. What's going on? Jesus. Oh my god. Who the Okay, I didn't expect that one. Tyler. Tyler, are you alright? Uh, Allison. Barn. Stay there. I got it. What's going on? Definitely not a fuse, because I thought a fuse box might have blown, but... See, that's not the case. The... What happened? Uh, there, there was... A, a guy. He smashed me in the face with the door. What guy? I don't what know. did he look like? I'm not sure. I couldn't see straight, and, and he was all in black. God. Why would someone try to burn down our barn? That's a good question. I don't know. But I'm going to find out. Huh. At least you were spared. Asshole even dumped the drawers. I might have found something. Yeah, I know. He went looking under the rug? Did he try to burn his way through or something? Did he really have to smash everything? I don't know. Don't even know who the guy was. So, did Eddie teach you how to put out a fire? Nope. I taught myself. Well, at least he left us the junker. God, he really turned this place upside down. What the heck? Is, that, is that a that? box under the barn? Yeah, what the hell? I think this is where the fire started. So he was trying to burn whatever's inside? We should check it out. I'm gonna need to remove a few more planks to get to it. Hmm, where could we possibly find a tool to do that? Well... These planks look newer than the rest. That corner used to be all dirt for chickens. She was always saying how she was gonna make this place a real homestead. Little house on the tundra. Is that a box under the barn? Yeah. It's weird. What the hell? I think this is where the fire started. So he was trying to burn whatever's inside? We should... This gas can was already here this morning. He didn't bring it with him. Hmm. 
Oh, crowbar. Nice one. Well, this is weird. I guess Didn't we expect know how this. Made the hole. Uh, was he trying to burn it? But trying to burn his way in, or trying to burn what was Step there? Step back. I'll be fine. Right. You could have just used your feet to stamp on it. What is that? Other than a box. Well, I only know one person who'd bother to decorate a storage box like this. Marianne. Let's open it. What's that there? Some kind of carving. Not Wait, a book of goblins. What's going on here? Apparently... Wait. I guess that... Wait, look, it's this. Hmm. Wait, she said, wait, look, it's the same symbol. Probably this one. Once upon a time in the deep and ancient forest, an early winter so storm blanketed everything in snow. It was so early in the year that the creatures of the forest were not yet ready for an ordinary winter, much less the bad one. And everyone agreed that the storm was a sign of the Ice King that plans for a long cold winter. The princess had grown up in a kingdom where it was sunny all year long and the goblins were very young, but no one in the big wood wooden house knew how to prepare for such a winter. The house was not well insulated and they did not have enough fuel or food. Only the pious pelican noticed their plight and when it came time to fly south with the other birds, her heart was heavy with sadness. What can I do? He thought, I'm a migratory bird, and if I feel, and if I were to stay, I would look after my flock. The time came to go, and the pelican struggled to take flight. It felt, as, it felt as though a leaden, <clears throat> a leaden weight, were stuck right in the center of her of her chest. What can I do? He thought, I'm a migratory bird, and if I were to stay, who would look after my flock? She managed to take off, but only just barely flapping fiercely and catching up catching up with other birds. Hmm. Okay. Holy crap. Um Okay. As the poise pious pelican began her journey, the storm picked up battering to battering her to a fro. She had fallen well behind the flock and she was already growing tired. But for all the ch all her challenges in the air, she could tell she could tell things were much worse on the ground. A deep freeze had settled over the forest. The leaden weight in her chest grew heavier as she thought of the princess and the goblins. What can I do? She thought. I'm a migratory bird, and if I were to stay, who would look after my flock? <coughs> the storm intensified, and the pelican was in a total whiteout. She knew she should ha should have despaired, but all she could feel was the weight which had grown and grown until she thought she might drop in out of the sky. She had felt she had felt called to help. Hmm? She had felt? She had felt called to help. Failed. Felt? She had felt called to help the princess and the goblins, but she had ignored it. She should have stayed, she thought. It might it was the right thing to do, and now I'm lost, with no more no way to make it right. Suddenly, she was plucked from the sky and deposited in the hall of the Ice King. Pelican, he said. You were, the, you were flying in circles around my mountain. I was lost, she said. Weighed down by the weight of guilt on my heart. The Ice King, sca Ice King stared at her sagly. It is, is it guilt or is it something else? Open your beak. He reached down inside of her, pulling out a glowing stone. The pious pelican was surprised at how it filled her with warmth. Chasing away cold and her, and her doubt. You know what you must do, said the Ice King. The pious pelican flew straight to the big wooden house. Snow had already blown in through the, through it. Its many cracks in the ice crept across the floorboard. She found the princess and the goblin huddled in front of a quiet heart, in front of the quiet hearth, near nearly frozen solid. No, 
She cried, and then she placed the stone in the princess's lap. The warmth of the spread through the warmth of it spread through the whole house, melting all of the fro all that had frozen. The princess threw her arms around the pelican's chest, and the goblins clung to her legs. Thank you, they cried. You're welcome, said the pelican, smi smiling in a deep satisfaction. What is that? asked the princess, staring at the wonderful stone. At first, said the pelican, I thought it was my guilt, but when the Ice King pulled it out of me, I realized it was something much more powerful. Just then, the storm broke, and the skies cleared. The pelican filled the big wooden house l larder with food from her beak. And then she took to the skies, lightened, lightened by the knowledge that her that through her char charity, everyone in the big wooden house would be warm and fed until spring. And that is the story of how the pious pelican saved the wise princess and the crafty goblins from a long winter. Well? Three digits. Any ideas? Hmm. Marianne was never really a numbers kind of person. Okay. But if she's not a number kind of person... Wait. Look. Oh wait, this was this one. It's the same symbol. The secret. I was looking down at the uh, the little tabs. It was the one up, up there on the top. <coughs> okay, so there we go. Uh, once upon a time in the deep ancient forest, a crafty goblin spied on the secret secret keeper as she may had made her rounds, gathering up secrets that the animals of the forest had for sale. How said the first goblin? Does she get the people's secrets? Do you suppose she peels open their heads? Let's find out, said the second. And so the goblins watched the secret keeper. They watched her until stalwart moose came came to her, head hanging low. It was my fault. I chose the uneven trail. I can't bear to remember. The secret keeper nodded and gazed into stalwart moose's eyes. Though the goblins couldn't hear anything, they knew she was speaking to, to the moose. moose for the secret keeper spoke in people's minds with the gift of the voice. After a few minutes of stalwart moose blinked. I feel lighter, said the moose. Did I give you something? And uh, did, did I just give you something? Secret keeper nodded, the handling him handing him a coin. The stalwart moose nodded and plodded along down the trail the trail. He spied on spied the goblins hiding in the woods and narrowed his eyes, for he knew the goblins were often up to mischief. The two goblins whistled innocently and the moose was forced to carry on, because they were not doing anything obviously bad. I need to know what the secret was, said the one said one of the goblins. Let's go buy it. So the goblins approached the secret keeper before she could get, stow away Moose's secret. We want to buy Moose's secret. What do you have to trade? asked the secret keeper, her voice filling their minds. The goblins produced a silver handle hairbrush they had stolen from the princess. And the secret keeper nodded, and that is how the goblins came to know that a moose, that the moose's mate had tumbled down the cliffside to her death. The secret keeper moved on. For the first goblin said, I want to know more. So the goblins followed the secret keeper, hoping to find where she hid the secrets. They followed her to the peak of a nearby ridge and watched as, they st as she stowed the rest of the day's secrets high in a cloud. When she, was, when she had gone, they climbed... A high spruce. They climbed a high spruce tree that disappeared into the misty skies. They reached out and just managed to dip their hands into the clouds. Their hands were filled with memories, and they snatched their hands back out, as if they had just thrusted them in boiling water. Tears poured down their cheeks. That was how the secret keeper found them, crying in the trees. You stole my secrets, seethed the secret keeper. Give them back. The crafty goblins stopped crying because they saw the opportunity. What will you give us in exchange? They asked. I will give you back the silver handle hairbrush, offered the secret keeper. For so many secrets? Psha! You'll have to offer more than that. What if, said the secret keeper, I shared the gift of the voice? The crafty goblins grew excited. That will do. So the secret keeper shared the gift of the voice with the goblins, and immediately they found that they could hear one another through one another's thoughts and feels feel each other's feelings the crafty goblins gave gave back her secrets gave back the secrets they had taken and ran back to the big wooden house they found the princess preparing food they tried to peer into her mind but they found it was blank they tried to speak to her using only their own mind but she could not hear them it seemed the secret keeper was craftier than the crafty crafty goblins 
for she had only shared enough of her power to let the goblins use the gift of the voice with each with each other and not the whole of the forest and that's how the goblins stole the gift of the voice from the secret keeper but why they could only use it on each other okay well that wasn't helpful at all like what what would be then I think we just need to break the lock. There must be something in here we can use to get it open. And preferably without destroying the box. Yeah, I know, but... I don't really know what's going on. Like, it says that there... Um... So... Oh... Oh, that's stupid. 130. I didn't even see it. I thought I had to read it. Why did I do that? That did it. <laughs> it was just there on the pages and I was reading it and I didn't, wasn't looking at the art around it. Well, what's in there? Oh no. Oh jeez. Harrison or something? Marianne. Okay, so I guess... I guess she didn't know how much of an ass he'd turn out to be. I don't even, don't even know what's that. Dear Marianne, I need to see you again. I know that sounds... I know how that sounds, and I don't want you to think I chase after all the new girls in Dallas Crossing. I've always taken my vows seriously, but something changed when I met you. When we're together, I feel like I'm 80 down the high... I'm doing 80 down the highway with my lights off, and I never want to stop. I know it isn't right, and we both have a lot to lose, but I need to be with you again. I hope you feel the same. Heart symbol. Um, P.S. I bought you a little something for next time. I can't wait to see how it looks on you. Okay. What a mess. Fuck. That's rough. Marianne, I'm sorry you're in this situation. This, this guy tried to push Marianne to get an abortion. I know you know she wanted to keep us. Norian, I'm sorry you're in this situation. I know you feel you'd make a great mother, and I don't doubt you'll will someday. But right now, we have to be sure you don't ruin the, ruin three lives. My marriage hasn't been happy for some time, but she doesn't deserve this. But mostly, I'm worried about you. People here talk, talk, and I don't want you to have to go through that. I know money has been tight, but I'll do what I can to help you do the right thing. Just let me know how much you need. Damn. Yeah, that's... But if that's from... From Sam, that's... That's everything. What the hell? So... Marianne hid a box under the barn. A box full of letters from our deadbeat dad. Well... Who says he's deadbeat? He came for these letters. That's... That's clear. He turned the whole place upside down and didn't take anything. All he wanted was that box. And he was willing to burn down the barn to get rid of what was inside. You know what it all means, right? Yep. That guy had an affair with Marianne, and he just tried to torch the evidence. He must have heard we were clearing out the house. He was worried we'd find it. You know, I... I can't shake the feeling I've seen him here before. Well... I'm betting this on the... Uh, oh god. I'm seriously betting this on uh, on Sam. I seriously think it's Sam Kansky who's doing this. Okay, where... Oh, here it is. Wait, whoa, what? Oh, I needed to follow him. Sorry. I don't no know clue. about you, but I haven't forgotten anything about that night. I would have said the same thing, but something felt different. I need to see the rest. But you know what happens down there. That's the thing. I'm not sure I do. <sighs> hmm. All right. Let's go. Some kind of work boot. 
Maybe fishing boots? Um. Oh, there this it is. is. Where I tripped. The Mad Hunter. Oh yeah. Wait. There was someone here that night, in the woods. No, it was just I. I saw. Who the hell did I actually see? That's a good question. Damn. He ran straight for it. No stops. No turns. He was on a mission. Is there someone over there? The Mad Hunter. Wait. No. What? No. That. No, what? No. That was the Mad Hunter. What? What are you talking about? That night, I thought I saw the Mad Hunter in the woods, but I guess it was just some asshole. Some asshole who just fucking stood there and watched while our mother chased me with a shotgun. Do you That's... think it was the same guy? Maybe. I mean, it had to be him, right? They were wearing the same fishing gear. Yeah, unless everyone who wants to mess with us is coordinating outfits. And wait. He was here once before, wasn't he? A few days before Marianne died? Maybe? Hold on, do you feel that? Oh yeah, that's true. They were telling that they were, um, that was at the start of this chapter, that they were having fun inside, and then suddenly at the door there was that guy, and they said like, well, that, didn't it feel real that that was the, the Mad Hunter? Trail ends here. It looks like he jumped into the gully. Damn. Uh, there's something here. Nothing close. No, but that's true. It's been three times that this happened. Wait, where is it? Oh. Oh, this wasn't what, the, what I wanted. Tyler, not there. Our mother fought with someone on the dock, about us. We need to know if it was the same guy. But what if it's not that memory? Well, what if it's... I can't go through that again. We have to take that chance. Yep. But do sure. we really? I mean, someone just tried to burn our barn down. Yeah, and that means we've got to be close to something. I'm not going on that dock. No, we're not gonna do that. Just one more time is fine. Just one more time, please. There's always just one more. Every time it seems like we're done with this, something new pops up. True. What if this is the only chance to figure out who our father is? Then we go on living our lives without him, just like we always have. Come on, we need to know the truth. For her. What if I don't want to know the truth, huh? Did you ever consider that? No. Wow. You just push and push and- You have to take responsibility for your part in Marianne's death. What? What? How? How? How can you say that to me? I didn't. But I, I did, right? Earlier, to Eddie. But I, I swear I didn't just say that to you. So we can't even trust our own voices now? Apparently. I, I don't know. I'll do yeah. it. Let's go. Well, this is um, annoying then. Wait, what? Why were they? Oh, come on. Oh, Lord. What to do? You're stepping on my foot. Can you hear what they're saying? Quiet. We don't want mom to catch us out of bed. What? What the? I told you, I told you that would happen. We almost had it though. That was us watching Marianne fight with that guy. Try to focus on him, all right? 
Don't think about anything else. Wait, that would mean that there was something. I was right. That there was something was happening, and that she had the gun for her own protection. Sam probably gave it to her to make sure that she could protect herself. She just ran after Tyler to protect him if something would happen. So you're here to make sure I've been keeping my mouth shut? I don't owe you anything. You've been a little all over the place lately. All over the place? I've just been trying to survive. If you want to make sure I don't get desperate, you could help us out. Lend me some money. Mm. What happened? Why did it stop? I can't, Tyler. But we were so damn close. Does she know more? I have the feeling that she knows more than she's letting on. I'm sorry, but I'm done. That's it? You're just giving up, just like that? You can't do this. We mm. owe her. Marianne is gone, Tyler. And nothing we do is gonna change that. Don't go, please. You can't keep running from this alley, or it's only gonna get worse. Man, that's true. This is gonna bite. Is it gonna keep chewing on you? Damn. That's tough. And I take it that that's gonna be for the next episode. This is getting really tough for to watch for them. It's damn. I I'm. Starting to think that Marianne knows a lot more than she's letting on. She doesn't want to hurt Tyler with the truth, as it's probably very inconvenient. Which the truth, in this case, quite often probably is. Marianne was really a good woman, probably, because she was probably protecting everyone. Um, I guess that the guy... It, because she was sitting in a tough place, and she probably got money from the guy... And she couldn't return it. He came in to cash in, but couldn't. She was getting a gun. Probably for different reasons than to kill the kid. But she knew that he would probably arrive at the... Like, she already was with the guy at the dock. So he probably... She probably knew that the guy could be there. And as we know now, probably the guy was there. Which would probably mean that some... Thing is coming up real soon. But that's for the different episode. Anyway, if you think this is great, let me know in a comment because I'm I'm I wonder what you uh what you guys think of uh of the game so far. I think it's incredible, uh incredibly made, um really human. It's it's there's not really much that I can complain about. Um so yeah, looking forward to the next part, and um I will see you there or in another video uh on the channel so yeah be sure to like and subscribe if you want if you like it uh, and you don't miss any other videos coming up anyways see you next video cheers shit allison i'll get the fire extinguisher